wait a second, what is this? Am I outside right now? What? What is that thing? Is that the sun? You guys, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why it feels so great outside, even though it's early February, but I'm not gonna question it. I'm gonna roll with this and enjoy the time while we have it. So since I have this rare, blessed opportunity to actually be outside and not have snot running down my nose and it turning red and shivering and so cold that I wanna cry, because we've got this chance, I wanna to talk to you guys about an expert level weed that we see a lot in our area, and that is POA. So I've seen this quite a bit from some of the other YouTube channels in the lawn care industry, DIY homeowners or lower level industry professionals that are just kind of starting out, where they're showing off their yard and they say, oh, take a look at this yard, look at how green it is, look at all that grass, and they're so excited, they got a really good result from their fall seeding and they're stoked about it, and that's great. The problem is a lot of that isn't actually the fescue that they were trying to grow. If we actually get down and funky and look at the lawn, you can see these areas that are thicker and a darker green. There, 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 kind of mixed in with this thinner, lighter green color. There, there, a little bit over there. That's what we're talking about when we say that the whole lawn itself is not actually fescue. That dark green is your fescue. That's what you want to have. That's what we're going for. That's the lawn of choice. All that light green that's in there is POA. It's a mix of POA annua and POA trivialis. So let me give you a more close-up shot of that. This right here this dark stuff, this is your fescue. That's what fescue is going to look like a few months after the seed has grown in and developed. It's going to be kind of thickened together, that darker green doing its thing. It's going to get thicker than that as it grows in. But next to it, this thinner stuff that's kind of growing in clumps almost, that's your poa. It's that bright green color and it's actually part of the bluegrass family. So POA is classed in kind of two different ways. There is POA annua, POA annua, there's a couple different ways that people pronounced it. I say POA annua because it's annual. That's the whole point. It is an annual bluegrass. When a plant is deemed as an annual, that means that it completes its entire life cycle within one growing season. So it comes up, it grows, it reproduces, spreads seeds, and then it completely dies off. And the following season, it's that new generation that was seeded that's growing back in. Poa trivialis, on the other hand, is known as rough bluegrass, and this is a perennial plant. That means that its life cycle spreads across several growing seasons. So it comes up, it does its thing, it reproduces just like the annual variety does, but instead of completely dying off at the end of its season, it actually just goes dormant. And then it's the same plant that comes back up the next season for at least several seasons, so it's a recurring thing. This is important because the way that you treat and handle and look at these different varieties is really important and it changes depending on whether or not it's annual or perennial. So let's take a look at what the difference is and how you can kind of tell the difference in what you're seeing with your lawn. So we know that POA is this brighter green stuff while the fescue that you actually want is the darker green stuff. Ignore the dog poop, it's not important to this. What is important is the difference between POA triv and POA annua. Poa trivialis is what we're seeing in this section here. For the most part, that bright green blade of the poa is a little bit thicker, it has a little bit more definition at the base, and the biggest thing is that it doesn't have nearly as many seed heads. As you can see, this whole area is pretty low on any seed head variety, and that's because it's not as worried about actually reproducing and spreading itself like poa annua is, since poa annua is what's going to be dying off pretty soon. 
this section here is a lot more of the Poa annua. You can see that the light green is growing up in more clumpy formations as opposed to the Poa trivialis, which kind of spread in sections instead. Also, look at all of those seed heads. This is gonna be your giveaway for Poa annua this time of year. Because it's gonna be dying off once it hits spring, it's going nuts right now, reproducing and producing all of these seed heads so that it can have a good shot at coming back next season. So where did this come from? That's the big question that a lot of people are asking, and it's a really smart one, because in order to be able to address the issues with any kind of weed, it's really important to know what the source point is. Poa annua is actually one of the most widespread weeds across the world. It is in the top five in terms of worldwide weeds, so it's a really common thing that pretty much everybody sees at different points. As a result, it's out there. It's in the weed system of the general environment. It's doing its thing, so it can come from just about anywhere that you look. A big source, however, is contamination in fescue seed. A lot of providers are putting down kind of a bluegrass blend or a lower quality seed that has weed and crop contamination. The more weed and crop contamination the seed being put down each fall has, the more likely it is to have some extent of annual bluegrass or rough bluegrass present. That being said, it's not always the case. There's a very good chance that your neighbor has some of it, and when those seed heads pop up and it catches on the fur of a squirrel or a dog and comes into your yard, just like any other weed contamination is going to happen, that's how you get it too. It's really not any kind of black and white situation, and you just have to kind of ride with it if it does show up in your yard. So if we're seeing kind of the three generic ways that weeds come up as being appropriate for POA, so either it already existed in the soil system and this was just the year of opportunity for it to develop, or it came in from a neighbor's yard through cross-contamination and it was brought in by external forces and it's an open environment and you can fight with your neighbor if you want for giving it to you, or it was possibly a contamination of the type of seed that you put down this year. Either way, no matter the reason, we see a lot of confusion regarding why POA hits some yards a lot harder than others. The answer to that question, again unfortunately, is appropriate for pretty much any weed. It's an opportunity thing. If you had POA come in this year and you've never seen it before and it seems like all you got growing this year was POA, it's probably because that was the ideal condition for it this year. You didn't have much competition from your fescue, maybe a lot of your fescue died off because of fungus, and then the fescue seed that you had coming in didn't develop before the POA itself did. Poa is a extremely cold season dependent weed. This is why we see it starting to pop up around November and see it dying off around March and April when it starts to get warm again. The biggest problem with this is the effect it ends up having on the ability of your fescue seed to compete and germinate successfully. Poa is so aggressive. As you can see with the sections of this yard that I was showing you, it pretty much takes over. A lot of this is just POA and unfortunately when it dies off in the spring that's just about all that's going to be left. The biggest issue is the competition that it shows for your fescue seed. Because POA is so aggressive there's a really really high risk of it out competing your fescue. For the most part the weeds that we generally see in the spring and summer aren't much of a threat to your fescue itself. They're more of a sign of issues with the soil quality or the environment that make it more habitable for that weed instead of your fescue. Poe is not quite the same situation. Because it's coming in at the same time as your fescue seed, when your fescue seed is at its most vulnerable and really needs the space to grow and develop rapidly before it shuts down for the winter, the Poe is doing the same thing. And unfortunately, nine times out of 10, the Poe is going to win and it's going to choke that fescue seed out. So what can we actually do about POA once it's in the system? If you don't have it right now, you don't really need to worry about it. It's not something that you can really prevent. It's more something that you have to deal with once it does show up. So like we talked about, the biggest issue with POA is that it has kind of this vicious cycle with your fescue. The POA competes with the fescue when the fescue is trying to develop, so it crowds it out, and as a result, during the winter, the majority of the new population in your lawn is going to be POA. Then comes spring, when the POA dies off or goes dormant and leaves all of these bare areas behind, your fescue isn't the kind of grass that can spread laterally, 
so it doesn't end up filling those holes in and now you've got all of these big bare areas in spring when you want your lawn to be thick and healthy and uniform so then what happens new weeds come in even if you're putting down heavy pre and post emergent weed control to try to reduce that risk they're just going to keep coming back and coming back until you reseed the lawn so then do you seed in the spring with fescue and just cross your fingers and water like crazy to try to keep it healthy during the summer when it's going to have a hard time or do you just fight the good fight and try to battle those weeds until you seed again in the fall and then possibly have the same problem again the biggest thing, no matter when you try to reseed, is going to be breaking that cycle. You want to establish and keep healthy a thick fescue lawn. The thicker and healthier your fescue is, the better chance it has to compete with the POA come the fall. Now, don't get me wrong, there are weed controls out there that hit POA. There are things like tenacity and even POA constrictor, which is a great pun, but it's a little bit tricky of a game to play with that and not something that a lot of providers are comfortable doing because of the contraindication against the seed that you're putting down to try to get that fescue going. So if you put down these POA control products at the same time that the POA is coming in, odds are your fescue seed is still germinating and trying to develop and there's a risk to it that that weed control is going to hinder the success of that seeding. So what do you do? It kind of depends on what your priorities are, what your resources are, and what your budget is. For a lot of people, Poe is not the end of the world. It's kind of like Bermuda that goes dormant in the winter and then it's green in the summer. It's not fescue, but at least it's green most of the time. It has its drawbacks, especially where those bare areas in the spring are concerned, but it's part of the system. It is what it is, and there are worse weeds. For a lot of people though, it's a huge nuisance. So in those situations, for Picture Perfect clients, we usually recommend working on establishing that healthy fescue lawn. So come the spring, possibly putting down some more seed, definitely in the fall, seeding a little bit more heavily and maybe a little bit earlier. And in the meantime, putting down a really soil focused carbon-based fertilization program that's going to create a healthy environment and most importantly, a really healthy root system for the fescue. So that kind of sounds like a cop-out, right? We're not going to worry about the weed, we're just going to try to focus on making the grass more competitive against the weed. But it's not. It's actually a really progressive method and what the industry in general is moving toward to reduce chemical herbicide impact and actually build a healthy environment for the grass you're trying to grow. It all goes hand in hand. If you're preventing the weed by establishing a healthy lawn, then you're also preventing hundreds of other issues with that lawn by establishing a healthy lawn. It's the biggest thing that we can be doing right now, so that's gonna be our focus. Not to mention, between you and me, if you're hiring somebody to maintain your lawn, odds are that the treatments for POA are going to be pretty expensive. It's a very selective and more expensive herbicide in the first place that's going down, and it's one of those things that unfortunately a lot of companies try to take advantage of and use as an upsell. That's not our game. We want to talk to you about all of your options and explore what's going to be most practical for our clients, for their yards, and for the system as a whole. So since it is so warm and an awesome break in the weather, tell me about your lawn. Whether you're one of our clients, one of our followers, or one of our friends, I want to know what you're seeing. Are you seeing POA? Try to go out and diagnose it. If you want to send me a picture in case it's something you're not sure about, that's awesome. I love that. And if it's something that you think you might have something else going on, let me know as well. Comment below. Let me know how our video is once it's outside. How do you like the look? Is there anything you have feedback on? And tell me about the POA that you may or may not be seeing in your lawn as well. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch our video. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't already. I'm saying it a lot, but we're so close to 100 subscribers. And I really hope that you guys have a picture-perfect day.